Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so what I had to do for this channel is create an email list. The reason why is because due to the nature of the content of this channel, I don't know when the content is going to just mysteriously disappear or this channel will be shut down. The email mail list is just for the followers or the subs so that you know where these things are just in case this mysteriously happens. So just go down to the link in the description of the video, click join email list, Put your email address in there and boom, you're good to go. That means that I can also send you other information that I cannot post here on YouTube. And you'll also know where the channel is and where the content is in the event that it does disappear. Okay, let's cook. Okay, peoples. So first I want to say big up to the sister, a sub on the channel by the name of Sabrina Smith for reminding me about this Christopher Dorner situation. Now, Christopher Dorner, I remember when this happened. I remember, you know, on the surface, I looked into it, you know, just followed some of the stories or whatever. But I didn't really dig deep when this first happened. But I recently did more research on this situation and I got some new thoughts about this thing right here. Now, let's talk about this man, Christopher Dorner. And I'm going to need people, the subs, the listeners to get in the comments. Let me know what you think at the end. Was Christopher Dorner experiencing racial battle fatigue or was he just a plain old nutcase? Or was this Christopher Dorner situation a case of both racial battle fatigue and, you know, a little bit of a nutcase? OK, now, Christopher Dorner, here's a man that people describe as a great guy. He's a homeowner. His neighbors said great things about him, said that he was just somebody who would always smile, wave. He was a nice guy. They would often see him in his garage gym working out, you know. He was respectful. People can't believe what he did. Friends from college and people who knew him said that if there was somebody who was going to do this or go all out, they wouldn't have thought that it would be Christopher Dorner. He was a I mean, he was a stellar what they call a stellar person. He was, you know, academics, athletics, military career. You know, Christopher Dorner received numerous medals throughout his military career. He received the National Defense Defense Service Medal, uh, Iraq Campaign Medal, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, Sea Service Deployment Medal, Navy Marine Corps Overseas Service Ribbon, Armed Forces Reserve Medal with M Device, Rifle Marksman Ribbon, Pistol Expert Medal, U.S. Navy. So here's what the white community would usually call a great guy, great man, college athlete, great guy, military guy, did these things for his country, whatever, um, went into law enforcement, great student. You know, but let's let's go into a little bit about his background. And then we're going to discuss the incident that was the turning point that made Christopher Dorner go all out and start smoking these people. OK, so what's interesting about that, and we're going to get into that later. But Christopher Dorner's situation confirms something that I've made numerous videos about on this channel. And I've seen it with it on my own eyes. Believe it or not, Christopher Dorner's deadly rampage started with a dangerous Becky with a badge co-worker. It started with a dangerous Becky with a badge co-worker. He wasn't messing with her. That wasn't his chick or nothing. But there was a situation where this white woman cop was being brutal and he intervened. But we're going to get into it. So Christopher Dorner, he was born on June 4th, 1979, upstate New York. His mother's name is Nancy Ann Dorner, and we do not know much about his father. He has a sister named Natasha. At some point in Christopher Dorner's youth, his mother moved the family to California. In California, he attended grade school at Norwalk Christian School in Norwalk, California, from grades one through seven. Christopher Dorner was one of them kids where he was the only black child in the class. He was the only black kid that he remembers going to school from grade one through grade seven. The only black kid in this Christian school. Put a check mark, a red mark by that. You already know where, where you know what's going on in that environment where someone, somebody is the only black child. And he dealt with this from grade one through grade seven, a time when his brain is still developing. So go figure, put a red check by that, okay? So just imagine, people, we all know that being around this many white people as an adult does something to your head, let alone a child. Christopher Dorner does remember in elementary school, he got into a fight with a white kid who called him the N-word in elementary school. In response, Christopher Dorner kicked and punched the white kid for doing this. After he did this, the principal intervened, slapped the, uh, the white kid, whatever, for doing this. And he also hit Christopher Dorner for hitting the kid. So, 
Again, this is one of those Christian schools. I guess they have permission to hit the kids, and that's what happened. But I don't think that response was fair right there. You know, you called me the N-word. I slapped you and I kicked you. Well deserved. The principal finds out. He gives the person who, who uses the racial slur the same punishment as the, as the kid who was obviously defending himself. I mean, what are you supposed to do when somebody calls you that? Go tell? I mean, whatever, man. Maybe you're supposed to, but whatever. Well, in this time during elementary school, a lot of us may be thinking those white kids must have been in school abusing him. They must have picked on him. They must have did this. Yeah, that's true. That is true. But what we got to understand that is nothing compared to what the adults do in these facilities. You know, I hope many of us aren't amazed at how much adult white adults, faculty, teachers, coaches, bully little black kids who cannot defend themselves or they don't know what's going on. I'm talking from ages six on up or whatever. The adults bully the children more than the children do, you know. So there's no doubt that Christopher Dorner was experiencing racial battle fatigue as a little boy. Now let's move on. After grade school, right, Christopher Dorner attended high school, JF, JFK High School in La Palma, California, and then he went to Cypress High School in Anaheim, okay? In high school, he was a good football player, and he was also part of the Police Explorer League. Christopher Dorner always wanted to get into law enforcement, okay? So he's a good student in high school. He plays football. He wants to get into law enforcement. So he's part of the Police Explorer League. Now, from looking at Christopher Dorner's past, one thing that I realized about him is, even as a young man going all the way back to elementary school, Christopher Dorner was the type that would fight. He was not scared of white people. When they did something to him, he fired back. Someone hit him, he slapped him back twice. If somebody lied on him, he said they lied on him and he stuck to his guns and his belief and he did not deviate from that. Never did. So that's something interesting about Christopher Dorner. Although he was raised with these, you know, white kids and white people, he wasn't he wasn't going for the bully stuff. You know, Christopher Dorner even mentions incidents from his childhood and his manifesto, you know, that he left before he went on his rampage, before he went on his rampage. For people to know, he did leave a manifesto. He basically wrote, you know, this long thing down about what he's doing, why he's doing it, and what he's going to do, pretty much. So in that manifesto, right, here is an incident that he talks about. Uh, it was a situation with a physical ed teacher, right, in high school. And the physical ed teacher had a student assistant, you know, or somebody that we call a teacher's pet. So the physical ed, which is the gym teacher in high school, had a student assistant or a teacher's pet. This teacher's pet name was Paul Miranda. Paul Miranda allegedly stole the combination codes to all the lockers. So, you know, in these high school lockers, you have the lockers that are assigned by the school. The teacher has the codes, but I guess the teacher's pet or the assistant can have them, too. So what this person named Paul Miranda allegedly did was stole the codes, went into the student's locker, stole people's stuff. While he did this, he stole Christopher Dorner's watch. Now, Christopher Dorner says that the principal at this school, a man named Mr. Freed, a week later, discovered that the person who stole these things was this student named Paul Miranda. He's the one who did it, okay? And the principal went on to tell Christopher Dorner, like, pretty much, I don't know how the conversation went, but in a nutshell, I know who stole your watch. It was Paul Miranda. He did this, this, and this. He told Christopher Dorner this in a private conversation. After this conversation, Christopher Dorner, you know, thinking like a regular person, okay, I'm about to go get my watch. So he goes to this Miranda, Paul Miranda dude, to get his watch back. He wants his watch. He knows you got it. The principal told him, you know. When he did this, campus security was called. And when the campus security was called, of course, Christopher Dorner said, hey, you the one told me. And the principal who told him this name, Mr. Freed, he reneged on his conversation that he had with Christopher Dorner saying, I didn't tell you that. We didn't have this conversation, which is what you remember. I don't know. A lot of us remember when we were younger, high school, junior high, elementary school. You clearly remember teachers used to lie. Now, you knew you might have been up to something doing things that you might not have been supposed to do, you know, have, have been supposed to do, whether it, people knew about it or didn't, which was a lot of times why you didn't, you know, go hard with, with, against the teacher or the faculty member because you like, dang, I, I did this, this, and this too. But they straight line to your mom. I remember this. These teachers would straight look at your mom's in your mom's face, your dad's face, your grandma, whoever, and straight lie on you. I remember this. So, yeah, I believe Christopher Dorner in this situation. And in Christopher Dorner's manifesto, he wrote, 
He wrote, Mr. Free, assistant principal, Cypress High School, remember when you lied to my mother and the police officer in your office about stating that you never st stated to me in a private conversation that you know the theft suspect being Paul Miranda stole my watch? Let me refresh you. Maybe you can confess to your family at the very least in the private of your own home. After that, contact my mother and apologize for lying to her in 1996. Again, this is in Christopher Dorner's manifesto, what he left for people to read when he went on his rampage. Now, I believe him. He remembers this from 1996. We all remember things from our youth. We can go all the way back to elementary school when adults would lie on us, you know, lie on children or might have lied on you. You remember these things because they burn in your brain. You know what I mean? So... Christopher Dorner, he seemed to be somebody who really believed in integrity. He did not like liars. You know, he fought white people or anybody back who did something to him. But he was known as somebody who was always smiling and very respectful. You know, that's who he was. In high school, Christopher Dorner also was a pretty good football player. After he graduated high school in 1997, he went on to California Lutheran University for one semester. After that, he transferred to Southern Utah University. At Southern Utah University, he was the running back on the high school football team. During this time, he did suffer two concussions as a football player. Actually, one of those concussions came in high school, the other one was in college. So in his football career, he did have, have two concussions, which is typical for a football player, especially somebody who's playing running back. Now, Christopher Dorner eventually went on to graduate from Southern Utah University in 2001 with a bachelor's degree in political science and a minor in psychology. So a quick recap on Christopher Dorner, what we know so far. He went through grades 1 through 12 and college in predominantly white institutions. He always had a good reputation amongst the people who knew him. He was said to be a good guy, but he was very opinionated and he stood on his square. So we have a, we have a young man, a black child, who was educated and did well in their white Christian schools, okay? He was somebody who they would say, oh, no, he's not like them, right? He's not like them. But one thing that I like about Chris, Christopher Donner is he wasn't, he wasn't a popcorn shrimp when it came to these people. He was going to fight, you know? He had size for a reason, you know? And that's good. Sometimes we see these dudes, you know, these big black dudes, they ain't no good once you take them off the football field, man. You might as well just snatch their testicles and put them in a pocketbook. After they come off the football field, they ain't worth nothing. They have no testosterone left. But at least Christopher Dorner, he wasn't like that. He was going to fight white people, you know, which is, which is a good thing. Um, after college, right, Christopher Dorner joined the Navy, Naval Reserve. He attended pilot school because he aspired to become a helicopter pilot, but he never completed flight school. Never completed flight school. But... This is what he did. He's in the Naval Reserves. Here's a testament to the kind of character that Christopher Dorner had, y'all, just so we could learn a little bit more about him. When he was in the Navy one time, he was stationed in Oklahoma. Him and a, 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 a Marine student named Lieutenant Andrew Bauer, him and Christopher Dorner, and this lieutenant named Andrew Bauer, they found a bag in the street with almost $8,000. The middle of the road, they find $8,000. Boom, they pick it up. They seen the bag, they pick it up, looking at, bam, it's a bag of money. But this bag of money was from the Korean Church of Grace, okay? The bag slipped off the off of the, the car of somebody named Byung Moon Jang. He had the bag in his car. He's going to the bank. The bag fell out the car. Christopher Donner and his colleague, they picked up the uh, bag. They see it, and they returned the money to the authorities, and they were called heroes. Christopher Donner was actually in the newspaper, in the no local paper, on November 5th of 2020, I mean 2002, in the Enid News and Eagle. That's what this paper was called. And they wrote about Christopher Dorner. They said he was a hero. They said, Dorner, a Navy officer who hopes to fly SH-60 helicopters used for search and rescue and special operations. Dorner said that his mother taught him honesty and integrity. It didn't, I didn't work for it, so it's not mine. And it was for the church, he said. It's not so much the integrity, but it was someone else's money. I would hope someone would do that for me. Better than most of us, right? This is Christopher Dorner.
Better than most people. Better than most people. Okay, so at some time, during Christopher, Christopher Donner's time in the Navy Reserve, he joined the LAPD, which was in 2005. He joined the LAPD in 2005. He, gra- he graduated from the police academy 2006. Okay, so he's still in the Naval Reserve, but he's also now a full commission police officer with the LAPD. A little bit more about Christopher Donner's li- life. At one point, he had a girlfriend named Ariana Williams. The relationship with Ariana Williams didn't go so well, so this woman, are Ariana Williams, she decided to put Christopher Donner on a website called DontDateHimGirl.com, telling the other women to stay away from him. She put his picture on there, his badge number and things like that, on this site called DontDateHimGirl.com or whatever. Christopher Donner found out about this, and he took Ariana to court for a restraining order. He wanted to get a restraining order against this, this woman. I'm sorry. Arian Williams. I said Ariana. Her name's Arian Williams, I believe. No, it's Ariana Williams. I'm sorry. Ariana Williams was the girlfriend's name. She put him on DontDateHim.com. Christopher Donner, he didn't like that. He took her to court to get a restraining order. I didn't hear anything about Christopher Donner beating this woman up, bruising her face, or doing anything like that. So maybe it was just typical relationship, fighting, cheating, whatever, lack of trust, whatever it may be. I don't know. You know, now... Christopher Donner, he graduates from LAPD Academy, right? He becomes a member of the LAPD during that time. As soon as he becomes a member of the LAPD, he is deployed by the military. He's in reserve, so he can, during the time that he's working, you can be sent to an assignment. You are excused from work for that. So he's excused from work. He has to go on a few assignments, which are domestic and foreign assignments, you know, when he returns from these military assignments that he was on overseas and back home, he goes back to his job, the LAPD. Now, being that he went out immediately, he was deployed, he still has to do work training or some people call it on the job training or work probation or training as a new employee. So here's where it gets real, y'all. This is where it gets real. Here's the turning point in Christopher Dorner's life. Christopher Dorner is assigned to work as a trainee in the LAPD, right, under a woman sergeant named Teresa Evans. Now, as I told you all in previous videos, that's a problem. Major problem. You have Christopher Dorner, a black man, an athlete, decorated military man, lots of experience. He has a degree in political science, and he's going to be trained by this white trash Becky with a badge. This ain't going to work. That'll never work. The only way this will work is if Christopher Donner gave this, this white Becky extra attention, acted like he liked her, like he was romantically attracted to her. Then, you know, it might work. If it ain't that, nah. One of these, these white women with badges, I told you again, they're usually miserable, savage type, you know, women. That ain't going to work. Look who's training him. But that's how it works in law enforcement, y'all. That's how it works, you know. So, you know, he already felt the way about that. And then you got to figure this woman, Teresa Evans, this sergeant who's training him, might have felt the way, might have been very intimidated by who he was as well. You know, in addition, this woman did not have a great track record in the LAPD. We'll get into that. But here's the incident with her and the turning point for Christopher Donner that made him go all out and smoke people. Now, one day Christopher Donner is working with her and he's a field officer. They get a call to respond to the Double Tree Hotel in San Pedro. They got a call about a man outside the Double Tree Hotel. Okay, this man, he's causing problems. He's outside the Double Tree Hotel. Christopher Dorner and his lieutenant, I'm sorry, this Sergeant Teresa Evans, they arrive. Christopher Dorner tries to handcuff the suspect. He's a man named Christopher Gettler. This is the man that they called him. Christopher Dorner is attempting to handcuff this man because he's got to go in. And at the time... This woman, Sergeant Teresa Evans, she tasered him. She tasered this man, Christopher Gettler. Okay? So when Dorner, Christopher Dorner finally got the handcuffs on this man, Christopher Gettler, he finally got the handcuffs on him. He says that this woman, Teresa Evans, who, who was his training sergeant, kicked this man, Christopher Gettler, twice in the chest and once in the face. Now, Christopher Gettler turned out to be a schizophrenic man. 
He's schizophrenic. He has mental issues. Now, Christo Christopher Dorner feels as though something has to be done about this. You know, he didn't originally put excessive use of force in the report, but he's like, I got to do something. So he wrote a report, but there were numerous revisions to this report. But in the end, in the end, this excessive use of force by this woman, Teresa Evans, who was training him, it wasn't included. It wasn't included. Now, in the court documents, Christopher Donner explained that he was concerned about mentioning what she did for a few reasons. But eventually he did go to a supervisor. Of course, we know. Bottom line, the LAPD believed that Donner lied about this excessive use of force by Teresa Evans. And when Christopher Donner says he was concerned, y'all, of course he was concerned. He didn't want to buck the system. He's thinking, I'm sure, this is just my thinking, but I'm sure he's thinking, man, should I say something about this? Should I just leave, let it go? You know, you could get in, you know, you can get in trouble for mentioning abuse or going against the grain in the LAPD or any police department. So he's thinking, dang, should I say something that was wrong when she did? She kicked this man in the face, you know. But of course, what we know about Christopher Donner's past, he's one of high integrity. So he does mention it to somebody. Here is the man that she allegedly kicked in the face. Here he is. He is Christopher Gettler. Is that correct? Correct, Chris? Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to ask you about the, uh, the uh, police contact that you had with the, uh, at the Doubletree Hotel. Do you remember that? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember being uh, taken into custody by uh, the police? Uh -huh. Okay. Do you, do you remember uh, whether uh, there was a struggle? Mm-hmm. And um, at, at, during that struggle, uh, were you kicked in the face? Mm-hmm. Did you have to say yes or no? Yes. Okay. And do you remember uh, how many times you were kicked in the face? Once. Okay. And do you remember where you were kicked in the face? Um, uh, right here. Okay. And uh, do you remember who kicked you in the face? Um... An officer? Do you remember what, what sex? Was it a male or female? It was a uh, female. And do you remember whether they were white or black? Um, they were black, or almost black, I think. <laughs> and I was almost white. So. Do you remember whether the um, female had uh, light color hair or dark hair? She had darker hair. Was, uh, her hair was not, her hair was just was a light, a lighter shade, darker. Okay, but do you, do you remember being kicked? Yeah. Okay, and how many times? Once. Okay, and where? Um, this side, I think, yeah, this side. Okay, excellent. I'm going to uh, stop the tape, um, and it is approximately 11.48 hours. Christopher, thank you very much. Okay, okay you've seen that. You heard him. It sounds like the same thing that Christopher Dorner said. This man is a schizophrenic, but everybody who has a mental illness is not always out to lie and say things that are just crazy. You know, although sometimes they say things that are crazy. If you listen close, they say a lot of things that are true. OK, now what happened next is the LAPD. They did the typical white workplace okie doke that they do when somebody black bucks the system or says, hey, this was wrong, you're doing this, usually it's discrimination or something like that, or in this case, excessive use of force, what they did was they made Christopher Dorner the problem now. He reported this white woman for excessive use of force. In turn, they said, nope, you're the liar. Teresa Evans didn't do that, and they fired Christopher Dorner. Long story short, they fired him for lying. They said, no, you're lying. I personally don't think he was lying. And I believe the man who kicked, who, who, who was the victim here, allegedly, who was kicked in the face, I believe him and I also believe Christopher Donner. But I think the problem with them was it also showed early in Christopher Donner's career. Remember, he's still in training. I believe it showed that he will buck the system. 
when he's seen something wrong. That's not a good look for the LAPD. You know, in the LAPD, you have to be somewhat of a crook or turn a blind eye when you see your coworkers being crooks. That's just how it is. That's the police department. You have to be a crook or you have to turn a blind eye when you see your coworkers being a crook until something big and political happens where you see an outlet where you could jump on it, you know. And this woman, Teresa Evans, has a very bad reputation. Of course, she's a white woman with a badge, a Becky with a badge. Most of them do. Christopher Dorner always had a good reputation. Listen to what Christopher Dorner wrote in his manifesto about this woman. He said, and I'm reading what he said. What they failed to mention was Teresa Evans' own use of force history during her, her career in the LAPD, which means she has a history of the use of force, excessive use of force. She has admitted that she has a lengthy use of force record and has been flagged several times by risk management. She has a very well-known nickname, Chupacabra, which she was very proud to flaunt around the division. She found it very funny and entertaining to draw blood from suspects and arrestees. At one point, she even intentionally ripped the flesh off the arm of a woman who she arrested for battery. This woman was arrested for spraying her neighbors with a water hose. Okay. Now, he says, knowing that this woman had thin elastic skin, she performed an Indian burn to the woman's arm after cuffing her. The woman was in her mid-70s, and she's a mother and a grandmother, and she was angry at her tenants who failed to pay her rent. And what he's saying is at this age, you know, people, they have pretty thin skin, and she ripped this lady's skin. She was upset that some people didn't pay their rent. Christopher Dorner says, this is something that I can completely understand, and I'm, I'm sure many have wanted to do towards tenants who did not pay their rent. Teresa Evans was also demoted from a senior lead officer rank position for performance issues. During my two months of working with Teresa Evans on patrol, I found her as a woman who was very angry and she had been, that she, she was very angry that she had been pulled from patrol for a short time because of a domestic violence report made by Long Beach Police Department because of an incident involving her active LAPD officer boyfriend, Dominic Fuentes, and herself. Dominic Fuentes is the same officer investigated for witness tampering. She also was visibly angry on a daily basis that she was going to have to file for bankruptcy because her ex-husband, a former LAPD officer and not Dominic Fuentes, who had left the department, the state, and was nowhere to be found by her, and he left her with a tax bill and debt that she was unable to pay because of a lack of financial means. Teresa Evans, you are a POS, which is a P piece of SHIT, and you lied right to the board panel when Randy Kwan asked you if you kicked Christopher Gettler, who was the schizophrenic man that he said she kicked. You destroyed my life and name because of your actions. Time is up. The time is now to confess to Chief Beck. Christopher Dorner also goes on to say in his manifesto, why didn't they mention that the board panel was made up of Captain Tengarides, Captain Justin Einsberg, and City Attorney Martella had a significant problem from the time the board was assembled? Captain Phil Tengarides, I'm sorry, Tengarides was a personal friend of Teresa Evans from when he was her supervisor at Harbor Station. That is a clear conflict of interest, and I made my argument for his removal early and was denied. The advocate for the LAPD BOR was Sergeant Anderson. Anderson also had a conflict of interest as she was Evans' friend and former partner from Harbor Division where they worked on, border patrol, on the border patrol together. I made my argument for her removal when I discovered her relation to Evans and was denied. This sounds exactly like law enforcement Becky here. Exactly like a law enforcement Becky, y'all, to go back on to um, that was his manifesto and what he wrote on part of it. But this is why I believe that this situation is real. Uh, the manifesto was real because it sounds exactly like a law enforcement Becky with a badge. This chick, Teresa Evans, has a history of abuse, which if anybody, if you know anybody who's in law enforcement, um, which I can attest as well. I was in law enforcement over 10 years. White women with badges are very abusive, very abusive, very mentally ill for the most part, you know, especially the ones who stay in that career. 
uh, talk to anybody who's a police officer that you know about their police work in their department, ask them about the white women who work there and ask them about their character and their mental state and they'll tell you these things. They're crazy, they're violent, and they're sleeping around with men on the job and they're very angry and miserable. Now, let me tell you something that I know from experience as well. When these law enforcement chicks start doing things that people think are tough, like, you know, they're gonna get high fives and they're gonna be paraded around by the white men on the job, you know, they, they start to think that they're tough. They, they become proud when these other white guys give them props and stuff for th things that they did that might be violent or they try to act like they're a G.I. Jane or something like that. They start walking around thinking that they are tough. And that's exactly what Christopher Dorner was saying about this chick. You see, they, he said in the manifesto, they gave her the nickname Chupacabra and she was proud of it. And she walked around like she was this. That's exactly how they act, yo. That's exactly how they act. Also in his manifesto, he stated that she had two boyfriends on the job, right? That's what these miserable white law enforcement chicks do. These white trash chicks with these badges, they hop around these departments and these agencies sleeping with different men, this man, this man, year after year, with this one, marry this one, divorce this one, sleep with this one, cheat with this one, until they do this their entire career, until they become too gross and disgusting and smelly, you know, for these white guys to bear or some of these black guys who want to lay up in them drawers too, to, to even look at. So then it's over for them. Or one of these dummies, they get to, you know, marry him and they sit around now while they just 400 pounds after they did all these things and slept with all these guys. That's how law enforcement work, y'all. That's how these, these white women with these badges are in law enforcement. This manifesto sounds exactly like that, you know? Christopher, Christopher Dorner wrote in his manifesto she had, you know, two guys on the job that he knew of, you know, and, she, and one of them that she was with had got a domestic violence situation with him. He's a crook. I believe it. You know, he said that she's miserable. She acts out in violence. And this is what they do. They're upset. They bitter. You know, they're mad because they, they don't have it in them to be successful in a country that has made that was tailor made for them to thrive. In a lot of their cases, they're mad because they don't qualify for a decent white man. You know, a lot of these law enforcement white women with badges, they just bums, yo. They just bums. They get over because they sleep around and they get something on these guys. You know, a lot of times they aren't even qualified to pass through the training, you know. And this is why she can kick somebody in the face and not even care. Who could kick another human in the face? Could you kick, just kick a human in the face you're doing your job? You can't do that. I mean, you could if you had to, if you fighting them or something like that, you're trying to defend yourself. But she just could kick a, kick a man in the face and keep it moving, you know? So long story short, Christopher Dorner appeals the suspension that they put him on or the firing that they put him on. He, he appealed it, you know? The board, they had people who were her friends looking into his situation, which they're not going to go against the grain. You're going to send me to, for somebody to look at this situation Right. And the person that I'm writing about who's using excessive force, all you all are her friends. You work with her before. That's law enforcement for you. That is law enforcement. You never get a fair shot. So eventually, Christopher Dorner is fired for what they say was lying on a report. He does not approve of being fired. He takes the proper measures and the proper steps to get this decision overturned because he doesn't feel that he should have been fired. You know, he filed a petition, something called a petition for a writ of administrative mandamus. He's not successful. And all his, his appeals did not work. The agency's decision stands. You're fired. Christopher Dorner wrote in his manifesto. This is what he wrote. I have exhausted all available means at obtaining my name back. I have attempted all legal court efforts within appeals at the Superior Courts in California, appellate courts. This is my last resort. The LAPD has suppressed the truth and it and it has now led to deadly consequences. Christopher Dorner. So he going to go all out now. This is when he went all out. On his rampage, Christopher Dorner, he smoked five police officers, two of them fatally. He is also believed to have shot the daughter of a retired LAPD captain who was somebody who had something to do with his case. He went and smoked her and her fiance. 
He went and smoked her and her fiance. And he shot five police officers, two of them fatally. Christopher Dorner wrote in his manifesto, this is what he said. I know most of you who personally know me are in disbelief to hear from media reports that I am suspected of committing such horrendous murders. And he wrote, you are saying to yourself that this is completely out of character of the man you knew who always wore a smile whenever he was seen. That's what he wrote. Back to it. Long story short, let's get back to the rampage. Christopher Dorner is moving around. He's hunting. He does encounter some people along the way because they had some things that he needed. Somebody had a boat. He needed that boat. He had to get it. He tied them up. Some people had a place that he needed to get into for a minute, a condo. He tied them up, but he did not harm these people. It's pretty obvious that Christopher Dorner had beef with the LAPD. You know, he did not go on a rampage where he just was smoking everybody. And I'm sure he wished that he could have got to this Sergeant Teresa Evans. As quite a few of us listening who understand this are kind of hoping like, damn, should have got her. You know, he went all out. Should have got this evil person who can kick somebody, a human being in the face, you know, and do whatever else she's done. Couldn't get it, though, y'all. But anyway, he had beef with the LAPD. That's who, he, that's who he's going out. That's, he's, that's who he is going at, you know. He had the LAPD and other local police departments scared to death, y'all, shaking in their boots. If you remember at this time, they were so scared that they were shooting innocent citizens. Remember, these dudes were scared to death. They were letting their guns go, and they were shooting innocent people, all because they were scared, like, oh, is that him? Boom, boom, they just shooting people. This wasn't the time to be walking around as a black man, possibly looking like Christopher Dorner. They actually snatched one up. They were harassing him, but he was let go. Luckily, they didn't smoke him and take him out of here because these dudes were actually shooting people because they were that scared. Innocent people. Conclusion to this, they eventually did catch Christopher Dorner, they say, in a cabin in Big Bear. Now, this is the part that I don't know. Now, me personally, I do believe the manifesto part. I believe these things that happen. Now, it looked like he might have committed suicide in this cabin out there. And then they threw some things in there. They just burned it down. That's what it looked like. I do believe that they threw some things in there to burn it down. Who knows after this? I don't know. But Christopher Dorner, as they say, is not here anymore. He, he either committed suicide or or they smoked them out and burned them in his cabin or whatever that he was in. I don't know. You, the listener, you probably know more. You probably have a strong opinion about what happened. But the part when he gets to the media of how they caught him, it just, it, it don't add up right to me. You know what I mean? But I don't know. You know, as many stories and beliefs about that, real, fake, whatever, you know. But I do believe that he did th th this story in this manifesto and the things that happened in his childhood up until this point, I do believe that Christopher Dorner was a real person. You know, I'm not going to debate nobody on it at all because what? I can't prove it, right? But after looking into it, it lines up perfectly. It lines up perfectly. In addition, people, do you remember when this happened? When this happened, you're right. Look at how many people were supporting Christopher Dorner, though. Like all on social media, you had Christopher Dorner hashtags. You had people, you would have thought he was the quarterback or something. You, had, you really had Americans supporting Christopher Dorner for when he went on his rampage. Why is that? Because everybody knows that the LAPD has smoked and stumped out hundreds of more innocent people, took them off the face of this earth than Christopher Dorner ever did or ever would be able to. And they got away with it. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. So I think people were just happy that to see somebody going at them or have them shook up in their boots and actually getting some stuff done. Now, people, I got to ask it down in the comments. Was Christopher Donner, was it racial battle fatigue? Was he just playing crazy or was it both? Now, I'm going to give my opinion, but I want you to give yours. I believe Christopher Donner was suffering from racial battle fatigue. And I do believe that he was a little, a little off. Okay. I believe he was suffering from racial battle fatigue since he was in the first grade. 
and you got to look at his life. He won his entire elementary, high school, college, college sports, military, LAPD around these white people. That's severe racial battle fatigue. And this right here can cause some slight mental detachment, you know, just from being around this many white people your whole life. It's impossible to spend your time around all these white people and not be a little off by picking up on some of the things they do, you know. And I've never heard from what I looked into Christopher Dorner, I never heard about him spending any summers at his cousin's house in South Carolina, Oakland, California, North Carolina, New York, nowhere. It was like, man, his his whole life, it, it, it was just straight white. Not that not saying that he wanted that, but that's what his mom had him raised in, you know. She paid for him to go to school. You know what I mean? So I think that the slight detachment that he suffered was from racial battle fatigue. And that was the part that kind of made him go on a rampage, you know. And you you, you got to think. Most of us think like, you know, damn, Christopher, just let it go. Get a job. Get another job. But you got to remember, I think what I think is he's seen white people act out for so long that he picked up a few of their traits. One being problem solving. And how do white people solve their problems? They deceive, they steal, and they kill. It's that simple. It's no critical thinking. You know, that's just what we know from history for them to do. And Christopher Dorner was around these people. And he knew at the end of the day, he was well trained at one of these things. And he was going to get it done. Get in the comments. Let me know, y'all. All right. Easy.